Okay, so it's time for a new topic, um, this time about constrained convex optimization. So I've talked a lot about unconstrained optimization, uh, a lot about convex optimization uh, in, the, um, uh, in the past few lectures. We started off the course by talking about actually um, constrained optimization when we did our, our bounded search methods, uh, and we're now going to combine these things together. So th this video is a bit of revision um, and, and of, of some things and laying down some terminology uh, about constrained optimization um, in higher than 1D. Um, yeah, but, it's, it, it, but I'll, I'll talk about a couple of applications first. So the first thing to uh, do is say, what do we mean uh, by a, a constrained uh, a convex optimization problem? Um, and so the, the, the problem that we're going to try and solve in this uh, whole chapter uh, is called a convex program. And so the idea of a convex program is to find the minimizer uh, of some convex function uh, where, um, where C is, um, where the set over which this function is defined uh, is a convex set. Um, so a convex set uh, is something that you might have seen before. Um, the definition uh, is something that you um, uh, will, will not be too surprising based on what we know about convex functions. Um, so the first thing to say is that these sorts of optimization problems actually come up all over the place. So a really common place where you see um, convex uh, optimization that's constrained uh, is in economics. So here's a typical sort of economics problem. You've got two gadgets that you can buy um, and they have some utility that's the product of the two, um, but you only have a finite amount of money. You only have um, $200 um, that you can play with. Um, X costs, costs $1, uh, Y costs $4. So X plus you know, the number of X that you buy and the number of Y that you buy uh, have to add up to, um, you know, multiply the pri by the price of each, have to add up to um, uh, $200. You want to spend all of your money. Um, uh, you know, and you also have that you can't buy negative uh, of something. You don't want to give these, um, uh, these doodads back, so you've got to have X uh, and Y be greater than or equal to, uh, to zero. You have to buy positive numbers. That's the sort of problem that you will have um, sort of seen uh, before in uh, linear pro programming, maybe not with the complex utility function. Uh, well, that's sort of a you know, very, very common problem that arises all the time in economics. Um, there are much more um, uh, interesting, uh, much more surprising applications of this convex, com uh, convex constrained optimization um, in things like network theory. So, you know, if you are um, looking at social networks or if you are looking at computer networks and you're trying to measure the flow of information um, across that network, so across the, you know, measure of, uh, measure of the flow of information across the internet, um, that's a network flow estimation problem or a network topography, um, uh, uh, sorry, a network tomography uh, problem where you're trying to uh, minimize some cost function. So here's your, um, uh, uh, here is your X, which is a, you know, an adjacency matrix uh, or a flow matrix for a traffic matrix for this, um, for this network. Uh, you know, uh, XG is some initial guess uh, what the solution is, you know, uh, subject to a bunch of constraints that turn out to be uh, linear constraints. And this is a very, very, um, uh, ex a deep area of research. Um, yeah, in, you know, it's, um, it's pioneered uh, in many ways, or it's you know, one of the huge contributors to it is my, um, my colleague, Matt Rowan. So rather than me talk about this problem, uh, I've included a, uh, um, a video of, uh, of Matt from the last time he taught this course, talking about, um, you know, annotating the notes, uh, the lecture notes, um, about this uh, network tomography uh, problem. And you can hear him talking about it. Um, straight from the horse's mouth because he's had a lot of experience with this. It's really fascinating, a really fascinating piece of applied mathematics and a real application uh, actually in uh, the science of the internet. So you should watch that. Okay, so to talk about these convex programs, uh, we need to know what a convex set is. Um, and so a set is convex um, if for every point uh, in the set uh, and for every real number t between 0 and 1, you have this definition uh, holding. So basically, um, what this means um, is that, you know, you've seen this uh, expression before. This is the line connecting the points X and Y, right? The straight line connecting the points X and Y. So in English, what this definition means, if it is a set's convex, is if for every point in the set, um, a straight line connecting those two points stays within the set. Right? So it's, it's pretty much the same, it's very reminiscent of what it, um, what it means to be a convex function. 
uh, right? So in a convex function, um, you know, every point, pair of points that's on the function has to have the straight line connecting them sit above the function. Here, uh, for every pair of points in the set, the line connecting those points has to stay within the set. So in pictures, it's really easy to describe what this looks like. So a circle, you know, an overly blob thing, uh, is a convex set because any point, two points that you pick inside this blob, um, you connect them um, and the line stays within the set. Something that's got a kink in it um, is not a convex set because that line, you can, you can find a line there that goes outside of the set. And in higher dimensions, you know, cubes and uh, prisms and things like this, um, are going to be convex sets and donuts are not going to be convex because you can pick a, two points on either side of the donut and connect them with a straight line and it goes out, goes between them. Uh, and it go, you know, goes outside of the set, sorry. Um, so convex set, you know, is um, uh, kind of intuitive if you've understood the definition uh, of, a, of a convex function. Here's a few more um, precise uh, examples. So these first two uh, examples, the one on the left and the one in the middle, are convex sets. So any point that's inside uh, any uh, that's inside the green areas in both of these, uh, any pair of points there, you pick them, you connect them with a straight line, uh, and the line stays within the set. Whereas this one on the right, if I pick two points that are close to these corners here, uh, then connect them with a straight line, and I go outside that green region. So even though uh, this set on the right is unbounded. Um, you know, the unboundedness is fine. We don't mind about the unboundedness, but I can find uh, pairs of points here uh, which go outside the, uh, which go outside the, um, outside the set when you connect them with the line. So that's the definition of a convex set. Um, what we really want, you know, what's um, really useful, would be really useful here is kind of a more constructive way uh, to find um, to define a convex set. So really often in these convex um, uh, constrained optimization problems, you know, we're going to be writing down a set of constraints that are, you know, inequalities to do with a set of functions. And it would be really nice to be able to take these functions uh, down here uh, and use them to sort of figure out whether or to define whether our set um, is convex or not. And so there's a theorem um, that allows us to do that. So if I have a set of, a, well, sorry, a collection of convex functions, so if I've got M convex functions, then the set that is formed uh, of all the points in Rn uh, such that uh, those convex functions are negative, are less than zero, you know, the set that you create uh, out of all of, those, uh, uh, all of those sets of points defined by those functions um, is convex. Right, and so the importance of that theorem, I won't actually go uh, and prove that theorem. The proof is pretty straightforward if you read it uh, in the notes. Um, but the point of that is that it makes it easy for us to define convex sets from convex functions. So, you know, basically, um, from these, uh, from in these pictures here, if I write down what do these uh, convex functions are, and find the set of points where each of these convex, each of these functions are convex functions are negative, right? So where the blue line, uh, the set of points uh, which are less than the blue line and the red line, uh, then um, uh, uh, then well, yeah, if I figure out these inequalities, uh, then they, that defines a convex set. So I can define convex sets in terms of um, functions. And that's really useful because these functions, these convex functions, are going to form my set of constraints uh, for my constraint optimization problem. So that's the useful uh, theorem, and it's going to be the useful way for us to write down um, a constrained convex optimization problem. There is, in fact, you know, it's so useful um, as a standard form that we'll write down our optimization problems in. Uh, the standard form of these problems is to find the minimizer of some convex function, f, uh, subject to x being in a convex set, where I'm going to write that that convex set, uh, you know, the, the minimizing point x has got to be in a convex set that is defined by these convex, you know, these m convex function functions, gi. So we'll use the convex functions uh, uh, forming the constraints in my problem. Uh, to write down the set, uh, the convex set, uh, and then I'll find the minimizer 
uh, of my objective function, my cost, uh, my cost function, uh, on that set. Um, okay, um, another way um, sort of, uh, of, of stating this, or another um, uh, criterion here is that, you know, I have to have, you know, I want to have um, uh, the interior of this uh, convex set to be non-empty. Right, so you know these problems would not be very interesting convex uh, optimization problems if there was no green area, right? So all this definition here uh, is saying that we're going to require uh, that my convex set here, upon which my, this problem is defined, uh, be non-empty. So the interior of this set uh, has got to be um, has got to be non-empty. Um, yeah, so we'll require um, all of these derivatives of f and all of my constraint convex functions g. Um, to exist and to be continuous, uh, and that the interior is not empty. And that's just going to make this kind of tractable. Uh, yeah, so some definitions here. Um, uh, you know, we'll talk about a lot about tight constraints um, for problems. So the, um, you know, the set of active constraints are going to be the places where these g's, these g functions, um, are equal to zero. So, um, yeah, it's going to be the indices uh, of the functions that are equal to zero. So for example, um, if the blue function uh, is uh, function number one and the red function is function number two, uh, then you know, the blue function here is going to be i equals zero. So the points on the, on the straight line will be the set, uh, uh, the set containing one. Um, all the points uh, on the red curve here uh, on the parabola uh, will be uh, the index, the, the active constraints there will be the set containing two. The corner points, which are where, which are the points that are on the blue curve and the red curve that are on the straight line and the parabola, that would be the set one, two, right? So it's just um, the places that are on the boundary. There's a way of defining the boundaries. Last piece of definition um, before we get into it, um, and this is kind of a trick, um, to convert problems into the standard form. So this is um, the standard way that you'll see us write down these uh, convex problems, um, these constrained convex optimization problems. The really common way to write it is to find the minimizer x uh, of some uh, function f of x. So find the min over all values of x of f of x, such that bunch of constraints. Right, so that's another way of writing, uh, of saying such that x is in the set, uh, is in the convex set defined by, uh, um, you know, all of the gi's of x being a less than or equal to zero. We'll write it in this standard form. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll need to write down some, some constraints that aren't inequalities. So notice that when we wrote down this standard form, um, our convex set was defined by inequalities. Right. But in a constrained optimization problem, we might need um, some equalities sometimes. So we might need some functions to be equal to zero, um, yeah, some linear functions to be equal to zero. That's allowed. We want to write it in the standard form. We want to write everything with equalities, uh, sorry, we want to write everything with inequalities. So the way to replace those lj of x as being equal to zero is we'll replace them with two inequalities. So we'll demand that lj of x be less than or equal to zero and negative lj of x uh, to be less than or equal to zero as well. So lj has got to be greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to zero at the same time, which means that it's, um, it's equivalent to it being equal to zero. Uh, that's it. So that's the standard way that we're going to write out um, con constrained convex optimization problems. So it's as the minimizer of a convex function over a convex set. This is just a friendlier way of writing it. Um, yeah, in the next, you know, uh, kind of few, uh, kind of bunch of videos are going to be the theory of these things um, and how we can actually learn to solve uh, these particular optimization problems. And so that is where we will go to uh, in the next tranche of videos.